So the process and the policy are, are generally what comes first, but those are also developed in back rooms normally. Um, you know, the, the first thing that needs to be handled in terms of training is going to be the culture. Because uh, the process is usually out of the training, training area's hands. Somebody else is coming up with the process. But implementing that process, the first step is to make sure that you've handled the cultural elements successfully. And, and one of the ways we used to approach that was looking at the people and saying, who are the people who are most likely to be excited about this and then most likely to be disillusioned? Get them trained first because we need their enthusiasm to carry the initial momentum. Then you're going to have people who like to evaluate things on its benefits, right? Uh, those are the people you want to train next because they need a little bit of time in order to get, get into the system and, and make their own judgments. But they're the ones who are going to be the most stable. Uh, so when the disillusion happens, they're the ones who are able to take those initial folks and say, no, 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 this is a really good idea. It's working well. You know, let's be balanced about this. The third group are the ones who hate the idea of change and have probably been there forever. Uh, so if you train them last, you can put them to work first by saying, what do you not like about this policy? What do you not like about the process? What are the things that we need to be aware of as trainers? And then you train them last once everybody else is already up to speed on it. So they're not able to sort of sabotage the culture of the whole change. So if you're able to take your groups and you're able to, to, to segregate them into those cultural elements, a lot of times you can leverage the different qualities of those groups uh, to be more successful in maintaining a, a smooth culture through the change.